Hello guys, welcome Hi. back One, to Drink, Read, Fabio. Oh, she changed up her vocal inflection that time. I'm, you know, change it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Kate Brimmer. And I'm Sophia Kayafis, and we are your hosts of this podcast. Yes. How you doing? I'm good. You know, life is busy, but it was a nice day outside in New York. So. I know, it was so pretty. Yeah. I love it. We love 70 degree weather. Don't go away. Yeah. Please don't go away. Don't go away. Well, during this podcast, we will recommend a book for you guys to read. And along with that book recommendation, we are going to create a, a cocktail um, inspired by that book. And then... And then I have read a book that is a cringe fest. And I'm going to walk you guys through that story and rate it based on how drunk you need to be to read this book. Exactly. Awesome. So let's get started. Let's I cannot wait started. for this. This cocktail looks so young. Yes. Uh, so we got some something new for you guys today. Ha 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 ha. Okay. So I'm recommending the book, The Lost Apothecary. So Lost Apothecary. Oh, by Sarah Penner. What a gal. Penne. Pasta. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Sarah Penner. The Last Apothecary is a dual storyline plot. So one of the storylines is following a woman named Nella um, who lives in 18th century London. She owns a secret apothecary shop where she sells poisons to women and only to women. She won't sell it to men. No men even know about this shop. Uh, women only. To use against horrible and oppressive men in their lives. Love it. Usually husbands. Um, to either hurt them or kill them. Most of the time kill them. Ha ha ha. We love it. The other storyline is following Caroline, who is in present day. She has a degree in history, but she has lost her connection to the, the like history side of her because her job that she has isn't really in that. She has a plan to go on this anniversary trip to London and she ends up going, but without her husband. She goes alone because her husband cheated on her, which is in like the first couple pages of the book, so it's not like a spoiler okay. or anything. She goes alone. On this trip, she decides to take um, op an opportunity to go like rekindle this history side that she loves Aww. and she meets this old man who teaches people around the city how to find old trinkets in the Thames River. Fun. On one of those excursions she finds an old vial that came from a apothecary shop but it has no name on it just a symbol. So her love for history ends up taking her down a rabbit hole, trying to discover where this file came from and what secrets it holds. Mm -hmm. And you follow these two women through their stories and we end up finding the truth about this apothecary and what went on there. Cool! Yeah. That's really cool. It's really fun. If you like a mystery, this is right up your alley. I love and, it. And strong women. We love strong women. Yes. So, right. go read this book. So today we are going to create a blueberry gin sour cocktail. Yum. And, okay, so, how this starts. You're gonna need your shaker, but we're not adding ice yet. It's gonna be a dry shake. That's what it's called, <laughs> apparently. It's a, dry shake. a dry shake. Oh, so I have blueberries and you're gonna need a cup of blueberries and we're just going to put those straight up into the bottom. Blueberries. So you're going to pour the cup of blueberries into your shaker. Good. The last one. Okay. Then we're going to add four tablespoons of lemon juice. That was like Okay. Four tablespoons of that. And then I have two tablespoons of sugar. Yum. You can also do simple syrup, but this is easier, so that's what I did. <laughs> sugar. Okay, now we're gonna take our dildo. Just yeah. kidding. It's a muddler. Muddle. Muddler? Muddler. Muddler. 
and we're gonna muddle these blueberries, which basically means to stomp them. We're gonna squinch them. We're gonna squinch it all. Seems like a lot of good to me. Okay. I'm gonna strain it because anyway, so. Oh, here, just, that's fine too. Okay. Okay. Now we are going to do three and a half pots of gin. Gin, that's good noise. Yeah, we're changing it up again this time. Oh, it's, it's coming out a lot. Two, three, oh, good. And a half. We're gonna need some towels, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to need egg whites, which, fun fact um, about this book, I wanted to create a cocktail that was like dark and spooky because you know poison, but in the book, one of the ways that is used to poison someone, I won't say the exact storyline, but it is with eggs. So it's fun that this cocktail has eggs in it. We are going to do two tablespoons of egg whites. Good. Which, this is going to be interesting. Oh, that was gloopy. Gloopy. Okay, now we're going to do our dry shake. You guys. Shake, 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 shake,
Meet our two leads, a widowed father with of sure. two kiddos, Belinda and Belle. Belinda. His name is Hunter. Hunter, and he is a sad drunk now. Oh, okay. His wife died. His life kind of went downhill because mm -hmm. um, his when his father passed away, he left him in this, all this family debt. And okay. so now he's trying to turn their family business into a horse racing business. Mm -hmm. So he breeds race horses. Okay. On this farm. And then our our heroine, which is Eliza Flight, who is the <laughs> late horse master's daughter who now lives alone on an isolated island in a makeshift house her father built. Okay. Starting off, it's kind of set into parts. There's four parts. Okay. So in part one, Hunter wakes up still drunk th from the night before and heads to his barn to shoot his new Irish race horse, who he spent his whole fortune on because it has become mad and killed a mare that they tried to breed oh him gosh. with. So he bought this super, super expensive, like, well-bred horse that is supposed to be a champion, and he ended up just being a crazy horse and killed one of his mares and almost killed one of his handlers, so... That's intense. He wakes up still drunk and grabs his shotgun. His jockey and the son of his cousin, Noah, stops him and begs him to try and take the horse to this isolated island that he heard about where a horse trainer lives and is the best in the world. This horse trainer can fix this horse because obviously the horse is a champion. He won so many um, races in Ireland mm -hmm. and they think the cousin's son thinks that it's just because he was at sea for so long. And he was trapped on a boat. Mm -hmm. And that made him go mad. So he agrees, packs up the horse on a ship, and goes to see the horse master. Okay. He pulls up to the island and finds a girl totally uncivilized, with no shoes on, a torn dress, running around with all these animals. She has like this huge dog, she has chickens <clears throat> and That's cat, you know, all the things. Mm -hmm. This is our girl Eliza, of course. Mm -hmm. So Eliza is startled because there is another human on her island that she grew up on. And she rarely ever sees any other humans, especially since her father has passed. Yeah. Her father has been dead for seven months now um, from men who hunted him down for witchcraft. Because they thought that he... Witchcraft? He was so good with his horses that they thought magic was the reason. Oh my gosh, people are crazy. crazy. When she tells him of this tells him of her father dying, that he's not there anymore, mm -hmm. and he had come to see the horse master who is no longer alive, Hunter gets his gun out and goes to shoot the horse, <gasps> Finn, oh. right there on the island. Eliza is horrified and begs him to stop, saying her father taught her everything he knew, and she also has a special gift of horse training. He agrees to let her try, but she only has a week to get the bridle on him, on Finn, or else he's going to shoot the horse and go home. What? Hunter's like, fine, you can try, woman, but one week. You get one week to make this crazy horse um, come to you and get the bridle on him. Okay. Um, she sets up a hammock on her front porch for him to sleep mm -hmm. and gets to work slowly training this horse. And in return, Hunter builds and repairs her training ring and the barn oh, okay. for her, kind yes. of as payment. Okay. And at nights, she cooks dinner for the two of them, which is kind of cute. Within a few days, she gets the ride on the horse, and Hunter is blown away. Of course she does. Of course she does. I never doubted her for a second. Never. I'm going to take a sip and do. Okay. Hunter's whiskey that he brought runs out. Mm -hmm. And he starts going going into withdrawal sy like symptoms oh, no. because he's a drunk. Like he is, yeah, an alcoholic. <clears throat> he asks Eliza if she has any alcohol, and she brings out this huge vat of rum that her father found in a shipwreck kind of area, uh -huh. and then shows him all the other treasures that she has found through shipwrecks. Oh, so they kind of get to know each other a little bit, and she talks about her life. Yeah, Hunter gets drunk again then goes onto the roof and looks at the stars. Eliza finds him and he gets her to join him to go stargazing on the roof. Oh my god! They start talking and getting to know each other. He gets drunk horny oh. and kisses her. Oh. 
Eliza's like, whoa, this is wild. This is so much better than all the books I've read. This is crazy town. And then they end up having sex on the roof. Mm. Oh yeah, that's kind of cute. Kinda yeah, like except they've only known each other for a week and she <sighs> doesn't know anything. Like she's so uncivilized, she only knows her father. Oh, she's like that kind of girl. Yeah. Hunter wakes up mortified, saying how he's ruined her, took advantage of her, etc., and is preparing for her to demand he marry her. He finds that she has finally been able to ride Finn, so he wakes up alone without her and is horrified, then goes to find her and finds her riding the horse. Oh, and he's like, what? They are hap happily galloping around <laughs> like nothing happened. She's the queen horse girl. She's like... La -di -da -di -da. La -di -da. This horse killed a man the other day. But, but like, I, I can ride him. Though. I can ride him. I can ride any stubborn horse. Wink, 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 wink. He is shocked. He thought she was going to come and yell. At him. Yeah, be upset. That night, he gets drunk again, of course, because he's always drunk at night, uh -huh. and asks her about it, being like, "Why haven't you come and talked to me about last night?" Yeah. And she says, well, he's like, have you been thinking about it? She's like, of course, I've been thinking about it all day. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. <laughs> and I can't wait until we get to do it again. <laughs> that was awesome. And he's like, whoa, no, this will never happen again. You are not supposed to want to do this again. This is uncivilized, like I ruined you. You're supposed to be mad at me. I took your innocence. She's like, we're on a farm. No one knows anything. Let's just like live our lives. <laughs> so she, she's like, uh, okay. Yeah. I guess that's it then. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, okay. Thought this was supposed to be the other way around. <laughs> I the guy that. Finn the horse is now fully trained, but Hunter refuses to leave Eliza on the island alone. So he packs up all her things and her animals from her farm away in his ship while she is asleep and basically forces her to move into his estate with him. Um, Which I did not like. Yeah. It was ridiculous. I don't like it. And she was like really it. mad. She was really, really mad. Can you imagine waking up and everything in your house that you love is packed away on somebody's ship? And yeah. he's like, okay, get on. You get no say because he's worried about you, but it's like, yeah, you can do that in a better way, sir. So she fights him but ends up going. And now we're going on to part two, where it actually gets better. I'm gonna also say that part one was half of the book, and it was so boring. Yeah. It was so, 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 so boring. So part two is where it actually gets better. Good. So, Hunter appoints Eliza to be the governess of his two children and the horse trainer. Mm -hmm. The kids are still heavily mourning their mother. And Hunter refuses to talk about her or let his children talk about her. Of course. Blue, his son, has been mute for two years ever since his mom died. Like, that's how much they're affected. That's, he has not spoken since she has passed. That's really sad. And Belinda barely knew her mom. She was five when her mom passed away. Mm -hmm. And is just craving anything about her. She wants yeah. to hear whatever she can about her mom and is very talkative and loves her brother so much. Mm -hmm. And appear, uh, usually speaks for her brother, like tells Eliza everything he likes, he dislikes, yada yada. Yeah. The children immediately take to Eliza and they play tons of games and she introduces them to all things nature because that's all she really knows. Yeah. <laughs> Eliza immediately notices how much Hunter neglects his children and tries to encourage him to be a better father and he fights her every single time to the nail. Dumb. Yeah. Blue and Belinda's grandparents, which was the um, past wife's parents, so his parents-in-laws, mm -hmm. do not like Hunter because they blame him for the death of their daughter and uh, the debts and everything. Mm -hmm. But to keep the peace, always invite him along. So they're having this big picnic for the whole family and they have a big extended family and everybody in high society comes. Yeah. And it's a very, very, very big thing. Okay. So he has the servants help Eliza find some nice clothes because remember she's never worn shoes. She's never worn she's shoes? She's never worn shoes. She was barefoot the whole time. So like she's, she's like full on prairie girl. Full on never has even known society. Wow. And has never worn a dress better than like a shift, you know? Yeah. Things like that. 
So they find her some nice clothes to wear. Makeover. That once belonged to his late wife. He like pulls out his late wife's trunk and they fit her into clothes that she wore. Yeah, but I mean, that's all they had. Yeah. And then went to the picnic. Eliza is weirded out because she has never worn shoes or a petticoat. <laughs> she's like, never worn shoes. She's like, those dogs that wear the boots and she's like, she was, yeah. <laughs> she's like, this is so uncomfortable. Why do people wear this? Yeah. They're pinching my feet. Yeah. But makes friends with almost everyone and gets along with everyone super well. Amazing. Hunter's brother-in-law's horse starts acting up and she ends up controlling it and calming it down. And everybody's like, whoa, how do you know how to do that? And tells them that she's the horse master's daughter. And they're like, oh, I'm okay. a horse farmer. Hunter gets super drunk because he's Hunter. And decides it's time to find a wife to ki- give his kids a mom. Because he realizes how much the children take to Eliza. He's like, I should get married. Okay. Eliza is training in the ring with Finn when two sisters that she met at the party come up to the house because now Hunter is courting all these different women. Okay. And so he has invited them over for tea to kind of court them and see if he might want to marry them. And they notice that she's wearing training clothes, which is like pants and mm-hmm. a work shirt, and they are shocked. They are so disgusted to see a girl wearing yeah. pants. Yeah, oh my god. And scoff at her and how she's working with horses. They're like, you're getting dirty? Yeah. Ew. You're a weirdo, girl. And then they go off to be with Hunter. So Eliza is trying to get the kids to remember their mom. And she's really trying to help. And she finds a portrait of the whole family and hangs up in the kids' room. And talks about her with the kids and asks them what they remember. They go to the mom's old quarters of the house and start going through her things and kind of remembering everything. It's super cute. Blue comes to her with his mom's old writing desk that he has been keeping hidden because it was the last thing his mom gave to her and she said, keep this in private. Okay. So she, two days before she died, she gave it to him and said, I want you to hide this. And not to tell anybody. She's like, this is a big secret. Don't tell anybody. She asks if he wants her to hold on to, to it now, and he just nods, because Robert, he still hasn't talked. Yeah. She opens it and sees that it's full of letters, and knows that they're probably bad news, but refuses to read them out of respect, yeah. and puts them in the wives' things. Mm-hmm. Blue is immediately relieved, and becomes like so much happier. He's still not talking, but you can see an automatic shift in him. Yeah. Eliza decides to create a memorial for their mom, and so her and the children create a little boat and mm-hmm. fill it with some of uh, the mom's favorite things. That's cute. And then call down Hunter, not telling them what they're doing, just saying that they made a boat. Hunter comes down to join them and he sees what they've done. And they start to put the boat in the water and light a candle so it can float away as a memorial. And he goes, wait, and he takes off his wedding band and adds it to the boat. Oh. And they send it. That's a good moment. It was a good moment. And then Eliza walks off with Belinda, but Hunter and Blue stay. Mm-hmm. And Hunter just breaks down into tears. Oh. Like, just total sobbing, so upset. That's and cool. Blue puts his hand on his father and says, It's all right. <gasps> oh, he finally speaks. I know. Hunter cries in the embrace, and they both cry together, and then he walks back and puts his kids to bed. How old is Blue? He's nine. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a long time to not talk. I know, two years. Yeah. And that's the end of part two. So now we have part okay. three. The horse race is coming up, and Finn is in tip-top shape. Yes, Finn. It He's starts, cool and Finn ends up winning the race, which is a big <gasps> deal. They win back. Hunter's credibility and his fortune. Oh, yes. And now he is the bachelor all women want. Of course. After the race, there's a huge ball. Hunter is dancing with all these women until in walks the most beautiful girl he has ever seen. And it's Eliza, all dolled up. Mm, Yes, she's had a makeover. Yes. Hunter immediately goes to her and asks her to dance. They look into each other's eyes, and Eliza hasn't realized that she's fallen in love with him. Of course. Of course. She has the time of her life and dances the night away. She's having so much fun. She takes off her shoes because her feet are hurting from her slippers. She continues (laughs) to dance, and the ladies are 
disgusted. <laughs> That's funny. She goes to the garden to get some fresh air because she's hot. And here's some of the ladies, talk ladies talking shit about her, oh, which is so sad. She starts to cry oh. and leaves. Hunter realizes that she has left and gets kind of mad. So he can't sleep and goes to the bar late at night because he's like, I can't sleep. I'm confused. And why she just left without telling me. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Eliza shows up in the barn because she wasn't able to sleep either. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Bridgerton moment? Bridgerton moment. <laughs> so they end up kissing and then having sex Ooh. on his desk in the barn. On his desk? Yes. <gasps> That's sassy. Then Hunter realizes that he loves her and asks her to marry him. Just right after on this one. He's like, marry me. Whoa. But she freaks out and is like, no, I'm sorry, I can't be a part of your world, and hops on a ship to California. Okay. She just, she freaks out because she's so hurt by what society has told her, mm -hmm. and she realizes that she just can't live there. Like, she will never be able to fit in. Mm. She can't, she'll never be accepted in this world. Hunter goes into his wife's old quarter for the first time since she has passed, mm -hmm. and sees the writing desk, and it's not covered in dust like everything else, he's confused. And he opens it and picks up a letter and realizes that she's been having an affair with his cousin. The wife? Mm -hmm. The dead wife. Mm -hmm. <gasps> and that her death was a suicide. <gasps> Whoa! That is mm -hmm. not where I thought this was going to go. Isn't that sad? That's really sad. But he does forgive his cousin because he realized he never really loved his wife and he did kind of desert her and kind of neglect her when everything went bad in his mm -hmm. life and just focused all of his energy towards horses. Yeah. And she was kind of like, a, she was kind of an attention whore and was like, well, if you're not going to give me attention, then I'm going to find somebody that will. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So let's end up part three, part four. That's crazy. Oh I know. Gosh. Eliza's now living in California as a horse trainer and is known as the sad woman. They always call her the sad woman. Oh. That is so sad. sad. <laughs> She's pregnant with Hunter's kid. Whoa! From the time in the barn. Whoa! And she uses the baby as a way to kind of continue living and loves the baby so much. So she life. has the child. She has, doesn't have it yet. It's in her oh. Oh, But okay. her being pregnant is what keeps her going. Okay. One day, a ship shows up on shore and she recognizes the sail. As hunters. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Hunter and the kiddos, and she's elated and throws herself at them. Hunter starts crying when he sees she's pregnant. Oh my tells gosh. her to never leave him again. But she's like, no, I can't go back with you. I can't live where you live. They will never accept me. I can't. And he says that they're not going to live there because they're moving to California. <laughs> California girl. Where people don't care. Yeah. And he has given his racehorse farm to his cousin and his son, and they're going to start afresh in California. And they California. Happily ever after has a family. Amazing. The end. Yay. Yay. So I have my three top moments that I want you to read. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> the first, I think they all three are from her point of view. Okay. Number one. She had seen the silent mating flutters of the shorebirds and the more violent couplings of the wild horses. She had seen the beauty and the desperation of an act as nature and as inevitable as the waves beating upon the shore. She knew this. She wanted it. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> She's like, oh, it's what the, the animals do. Yeah. It's what we're doing. Cool. Yeah, that's so funny. She's like, I've seen this somewhere else. Yeah. Not with people, but with, with the animals. animals. Okay. Number two. He looked beautiful in the way the stallion <laughs> was beautiful. His skin had a fine-grained, polished look to it. What does that even mean? And his musculature had the firmness of a marble sculpture. <laughs> she stared at him, all of him, two days to be abashed. And then, still in the grip of the wildness inside her, she touched. <laughs> she touched herself? No, him. Oh, she touched. Just touched, period? Yeah, she goes. 
She touched. Yeah? That's such a weird way to say it. I know. Why didn't she say she touched him? She touched. She touched. <laughs> no. Her voice was pleasant and cordial. She sounded a little different than she had before. She sounded completely normal. She had made love to him as if it were the most natural thing in the world. Was it possible a woman could actually feel that way? The idea boggled his mind. <laughs> oh my gosh. So stupid. She sounded a little different than she had. Dot dot dot. Before. I know. It's so stupid. He's like, that just it doesn't make sense to me. That boggles my mind. She's a free spirit. <laughs> But yeah, so overall, honestly, this book was just boring. Um, there wasn't that much that was funny or interesting. interesting. It was just like a lot of bad horse references and boring. plot twist was pretty good. Was yeah, twists. there was a couple, the second, after part one it got better, mm -hmm. but I definitely just pulled out all the good bits. We rate our books on a scale of one to five on a drunkness scale. So we have one is slightly buzzed, two is tipsy, three is drunk, Four is stumbling, five is blackout. So the rating is stumbling. Stumbling. It's just bad. Like you're gonna take not only just the horses and how long it took for them to even get to the good part. It took yeah. 200 pages for it to get good. It's not even bad in a good way. It's just bad. It's just bad. Yeah. And then on top of that, just the time period and those remarks that are just so dated where you just kind of cringe inside is yeah. kind of offensive and just not something you want in a book. Don't pick it up. It's not good. Mm -mm. It was a fun story to tell. It's fun synopsis to give. Lots mm -hmm. of fun twists and turns if you really break it down. Yeah. But it's a 400 pages that really, yeah. really nothing that I really struggled to get through. Yeah. Not gonna lie. I'd rather take a book that has like like horrible writing but in the best way that's just super ridiculous because that's more enjoyable to me than something that's just like average honest, and boring. I enjoyed reading my blackout book. Yeah. More than I enjoyed reading I enjoyed book. reading Cowboy Wolf Trouble and most of the other books just because it was so ridiculous and I was laughing the whole time. Yeah. Boring. But anyway, I have to be really drunk to enjoy it. Well, there we go. There we go. That was... The Horse Master's Daughter. That was The Horse Master's Daughter. Come back for next week's episode um, and follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Go like. Give us five stars. You know, all that jazz. Comment, everything. Let us know if you have any book recommendations or if you like our drinks. And we'll talk to you guys next time on Drink Read Fabio. Goodbye. Bye.